All right, checking here. Hopefully that's in focus. I am standing where I put my marker on. It's been a while here back on YouTube. Um, we had a baby, his name is Boas. We made a little video here. It's been such a great time. It uh, really changes your life. Um, it's been wonderful being able to stay home, being able to be with my wife, doing things with her. Um, but it's great to make another video here for you. We're gonna be taking a look at something very exciting. I love it, you love it, everyone loves it. It's the anamorphic look. Now we all know that anamorphic lenses are very, very expensive and before we get started, I just wanna say that I am not claiming to know anamorphic lenses or be an expert in anamorphic lenses. I just really like the anamorphic look. So we're gonna be looking at how to replicate the characteristics from an anamorphic lens digitally in Premiere Pro. So we're looking at four things, or three, four, four things, four different things that we're gonna be able to replicate on the computer. The first one being the chromatic aberration that you see on the corners of the videos. You'll notice that a lot of anamorphic footage has the chromatic aberration on the edges. So that's the first thing we're gonna replicate on the computer within Premiere Pro. The second one, yes, the soft edges. We all love the soft edges, the anamorphic lenses have it. A lot of vintage lenses have this already. So if you can use a vintage lens, I have this one here. This is a sonar from my grandpa. It's a 50 millimeter Zeiss. I have another one here that I like shooting with a 35 millimeter. I like doing those. Those ones already have a lot of soft edges. So if you can get your hand on something like this, something that's got a, uh, a vintage look already to it. Sometimes they have already soft edges, but if not, we're gonna be looking at how to do that on the computer. The third thing we're gonna be looking at how to do is the edge distortion that happens within anamorphic. You'll notice in a lot of anamorphic films or anamorphic looks, you have this almost like a bulge, I guess bulge in the middle that happens, but the edges seem to look like they're bulging. If you look at um, buildings or any straight lines, they kind of have a bulge at the edge. So we're gonna look at how to do that through um, Premiere Pro. And the last thing we're gonna be looking at is the aspect ratio. How to do that within Premiere without actually baking in your black lines like we see a lot of footage um, doing, just putting in those black bars, the PNG file. That's not the best practice unless you're doing like a vlog and then you wanna switch over to a, a cinematic sequence, an amorphic look, and then you wanna switch back to 16 by nine. Then I guess you can do it, but um, if you wanna be able to do it properly, rather than baking in your uh, black lines, we're gonna be able to do that crop within Premiere Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the computer. Remember, the files are in the link in the description if you wanna just download those. The whole template's gonna be there, the different presets and different things like that. You'll notice that I had to put a $5 um, price tag on it. That's just because the file restrictions in Gumroad, um, I had to put at least a dollar amount, but I'll put a coupon code right here that you can just use that, put it, copy and paste it, download it. You can do that right within Gumroad and get it for free. So you can probably create it while we do it on the computer if you'd rather create it yourself or you can just download it because you know, I made it for free and it's there for you and I made it for you. So hopefully you can use it. You know, you can thank me by subscribing and liking the video and all that good stuff. All right, let's go ahead. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go to gumroad.com forward slash Andrew Langfield. The link will be under the description below. Um, you want to go hit this one and we're going to add it to the cart. Once you do that, you're going to go check out and then make sure you enter your information. And then the discount code is Andrick for slash uh, or not for slash just dash free. Once you enter that, you'll notice that it will go for free and then you can just go ahead and pay and then you can see subtotal zero. We're going to go check out that and then we go get and then we can view our content. Once we do that, then we're going to download it. There's three things that I've included in here. Andrick grain is something I created here for you guys to be able to use because of Premiere's Pro lack of grain templates. I was able to create a grain um, using DaVinci Resolve, uh, the Fusion tab. So I rendered out about a minute of grain that you guys can use as an overlay for your footage. The other thing you have here is the preset. You're going to download that. We'll be using that a lot. And then the sample footage. That's the footage that I use here as a transformation. You can use your own footage, but if you want to use this one, you can transform it from that to that. I already downloaded it to my download folder here, and we have them here. So we're gonna install them now to Premiere. So we're gonna go over here to Presets, right-click, and you're gonna go Import. Then we're gonna go over to my Downloads, select this, and then you're gonna import that as your preset. As you notice, under precept, now we have Andrick Langfield Anamorphic, and that's the folder we're gonna be using today. Now let's import our footage. We're gonna double click under, where'd it go? Project, and we're gonna import these two. Once they've imported, you're gonna grab 
the sample footage, which is 4K, and you're just going to drag it over either to the timeline to create a new timeline based on that, or you can drag it to this icon there. I'm going to drag it over to the timeline. Once I do that, I have a now a sequence. We're going to rename this so I know what it is, and that is my footage. Now we have our footage here, and we can scrub through it. And we'll notice that it's there, and then it switches to a second shot, and that is our footage that we're going to be using. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to get started is the RGB in the corners, the chromatic aberration that um, anamorphic footage gives you. So by doing that, we're going to do Alt, hold Alt, and then you're going to drag up and drag up one more time. We're basically copying it three times so that we have three different layers, one for R, G, and B. Um, red, green, and blue. We're going to go to our effects, and you're going to go to the chromatic aberration, and as you can see, they're already labeled one, two, and three. So the top layer will be red, which we're going to drag over. As you can see, it's turned into red. Green will be our middle one, and then bottom will be blue. For those at home that want to create this preset, you can go to your controls tab over here, and all I'm doing here, you'll notice that it's the color balance. Okay, you can find the color balance under your effects. It's the RGB one under image control. You can just drag that over. The next thing that I did is underneath each one, I set it to 39 so that it evenly divides between the three, as you see 39 for that one and 39 for this one. And the same thing for the red, 39 there. You can just set them to 100 each if you want to, and then it'll eventually, uh, Premiere Pro um, turns it into 39 as it divides it. The other thing that I did is added to the blend mode you have to make sure that it's this linear dodge. If it doesn't, it'll do weird stuff, as you can see. We want to make sure it has a linear dodge so that we can see all three layers. I'm going to go to the scale, and we're going to do 100.4. Now that basically zoomed it in just 0.4. As you see, if I zoom it in, I'm zooming in the top layer. So you'll see that it zooms in from the outside, and the middle stays basically intact. As you can see, now we've got a little bit in the corners and it's creating this aber aberration effect. The second one, we're gonna do half of that, so it is going to be 100.2, and that's just gonna add a little bit of yellow to the corners, so it's not as harsh. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now that we've done that, you wanna be able to highlight all of these, right click, and select nest. Okay, we're gonna give it a, let's just call it nest. This is our new sequence here of our nested file. If you want to see what's inside, you can just double tap it. It'll open it over here, and that's those video files. So I'm just going to close that. Now they're all three combined into one long clip, which has the aberration. We can go to their second clip if you want to see it, and notice that it does have it right in the corner right there, whereas it didn't before. The next thing we want to do is the warping. So if you go into their presets, I've already created them here. Go to the anamorphic, and the next thing we're going to do, actually, we're going to use the soft edges first. We're going to start by the soft edge, and I'll explain why. You use the soft edges first, and that's just going to add a Gaussian blur to the whole image. You'll notice that all I did was create a Gaussian blur and put it to 20. That's all I did, and we're going to need to remember to add mask. As you notice, just a reminder, if not, the whole thing will be blurry. So we need to add a mask, which is just by clicking this one. And now we've created a mask. As you can see, the blurriness is inside, not outside. So we need to inverse it by clicking the inverted. Now everything outside is blurry. So I'm going to make sure that this spans across the image. And then to the top. I'm going to keep a little bit so that I have a little bit of blur on the top. And I'm just going to bring that down because I don't want myself to be blurred. Now we're going to feather it. By turning our feather up, we're just increasing that there, and we're going to bring the expansion out, oops, the other way, just so that we can find just the right edge in combination. Let's make this a bit bigger so that we can see what we're doing. As you can see here, if I remove it, notice the edges right about here, it's going to get not blurry and just blurry. It's just very, very subtle. If you want more of it, you can go to the mask and just bring the mask down so that we can blur that up a little bit more. Maybe it's got too much feather. Let's bring that down a little bit. Let's take a look at that now. That's looking a lot better. I really like that. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is number three, which is lens curve. By dragging this one on, it is important to notice that we put it below the Gaussian blur, and I'll, and I'll show you why. 
if we put it before the Gaussian blur, what the Gaussian is going to do is going to blend the white and this um, picture. So you're going to have a little bit of a white edge. If you put it after, it's going to just blend the black. Let me make this a little bit harsher so you can notice what I'm talking about. It's going to blend that black outside with the inside. It's going to turn it black rather than an, than an ugly white. So it's going to have more of a vignette feel. Once we have done that, you're going to go to the curvature. And I think it's too much maybe. I put it to 10 by default. I think I'm going to bring it down to about 7. 7 looks a little bit better. As you can see, you've got your bulge going on here and at the bottom. Now, I do want to be able to see a little bit more straight line at the bottom. And you can do that by your horizontal, either prism or this one, the decenter or decenter. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit so that it's the straighter at the bottom. I can, of course, go too much and you can see the effect and what it's doing. So I just want to go down a little bit just so that the bulge is happening at the top and not so much where I am walking. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to, of course, zoom it in by bringing up your scale. What I like to do is just tap on it and click your up key to be able to slowly bring in the zoom to where you cannot see any more white in the corners, which is right about there. I'm also going to bring it up a little bit. Wonderful. That's already looking so much better. I can bring in the clip again from here just to see how far we've come. I'm just going to lay it on top and we're going to do before and after. The next thing we're going to do is the aspect ratio. You're going to go down to the timeline that we created. That's your main timeline, the master one. And you're going to right click it and go to sequence settings. Now you're just going to change this number to be able to represent your um, crop. Right now you can see it's 16 by 9, just so you understand where the math comes in. A very common anamorphic ratio is 2.39 by 1. That means that the long edge is 2.39 when oh, there is one pixel. So if we did that for our 4K, we're going to grab a 3840 on the top and on the bottom is unknown. Does that make sense? And then we're just going to do our fraction over here. Pretend these are fractions, by the way. The top one is 2.39 and the bottom fraction is 1. So when, when this equals 1, this will equal 2.39. So what we have to do is two we're going to use this number and we're going to divide that number by 2.39. So let's just grab our calculator and let's do the math. 3840 divided by 2.39 equals 1606. So we're going to go by 1606 not 1607. The reason I did that is because if you do 1606 divided by 2, it gives you 803, which is the same number that you would use if you were doing in 1080p. So if your timeline is 1920 by 1080p, your second number is going to be 803. Does that make sense? 1606. And as you can see, 803 by 1920, it's telling you that is your ratio. As we click OK, you're going to say yes, that's fine. And now we have a very widescreen image. If you find that this is too widescreen and it is too much for you, another very common ratio that we can use is 2 by 1, which is very simple. It's basically just um, half of this number, which would be 1920. That's a little bit less severe, 2 by 1. When this is 2, this is 1. And we're going to just click OK. And that's a little bit better, not as severe. And that's the one I'm going to use because I really like the top um, windows in the image. Now let's go ahead and click our nested folder or nested file. And we're just going to readjust it so that we can see a little bit more of me walking. As you can see, that is looking great. Now I'm going to apply a very simple color grade. I'm going to go to my Lumetri tab. If you don't see it, you can click either the color panel here or we're going to go to Windows and just open Lumetri tab which is right there. A very simple color grade that I'm going to do here. I'm just going to lower the shadows a little bit to add a little bit more contrast. When I shot it, it was a little bit more blue, so I want to make that a little bit more blue, bring the blue in the windows a little bit more. That's looking a little bit better. And bring that highlight just a little bit down. 
You can apply a LUT if you would like to, I will. These are some LUTs that I made. That's looking great. I'm also going to turn the intensity down to about 50. Let's take a look at our image. That's looking really, really nice. Let's look at the before and the after. I really like that. Another thing that we can do is add a little bit of a vignette by going down here. I'm going to just turn it down a little bit just to add a little bit of vignette. Maybe that's too much right about there. Let's look at it before and after. You have to remember that very subtle changes go a long way rather than doing very severe things. You can see that very subtle changes will help a lot. The last thing we're going to do is just add that grain that I created for you guys just by dragging it over and we're going to pop it on top. Hit C and we can crop that and get rid of the rest. Now as you can see this is just a footage that's just happening on top. So we're going to change the blending mode under effect control and we're going to change it to you can do either multiply but I like soft light as you can see the grain is just very subtle in the back and some of the edges here and it just adds that extra little bit once you're ready to export I'm just going to delete this we can see the before and the after which just looks so much better I'm going to delete this here bring my grain down all right and now we can see here the difference at the clip we have transformed it to look very anamorphic just to recap what we've done we've added a blur to every corner by using that mask and the gaussian blur a vignette on the corners we also added the chromatic aberration which was very very subtle then we also added the distortion to create that bulge, the anamorphic lens distortion that it creates. We also added a little bit of grain on top of it to a very light color grade that we did there. And then we're going to export it. You can, you can hit Control M to export it, make sure your settings are correct. And then hit export. And then that is it. All right, well, I hope that was a help for you. I hope you're able to learn something on this tutorial and you're able to use these tools. Make sure to tag me if you ever use these tools. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and be able to share it to your friends so that other people like you can use these tools also. I hope everybody has a great week and I look forward to the next video.